Oh, uh, right. Yeah. It's a pretty little pen. I like it. The Pilot G2. This is the .05 we have right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna review it, draw with it. You, you saw the unboxing assemblage. There it is, the Pilot G2 .05 black ink. And it also comes in .38 millimeter, 1.0 millimeter. And when I went to buy them in the store, they didn't have the .7 millimeter. But the nice thing about these is you can just buy refills. So I just got some .7 millimeter refills. The refills come with the ink size. So that's what I did there. I'm gonna try drawing with all of them. Now, interestingly enough, it says here, proven number one longest writing versus average of top gel ink brands. And then if you go on the website, there's like, even here, there's a lot of little asterisks and it says they have like data on file and stuff. And I sent them an email saying, hey, can I see the data? And I was curious what kind of data they had about this. And all they said literally was, and I'm reading, in a test performed, G2 writes longer than any branded gel ink pen claim was tested. First of all, I don't know what that means, partly because that sentence doesn't make any sense grammatically, but they say the products they tested comprised over 80% of the branded competitive market. So they felt confident labeling themselves the longest writing gel ink pen or whatever but they won't show us the test. That's what I say. When they say they have the data on file, isn't that what it's supposed to be? What's the point of having the data on file if they won't show anybody, if they won't prove it? They have some numbers. This is the Pilot G2's average write out. How, many, how long of a line, I guess, it could write without running out was 1,480.3 meters. And the average write out for their comp competition was only about half of that at 752.6 meters. But if they don't give us the stats, the actual tests, this doesn't really mean anything. Cause what if they included a pen that only wrote for one meter? That could bring the average way down, right? Who knows what really went on there? Anyways, I, would, I wanna say that this is a pen, the Pilot G2 that I have used uh, a, a ton in my life. I used this way back. I used it a ton in high school. I love writing with it as I took notes and drew things and wrote things. I've drawn a lot of pictures with the Pilot G2. I've written a lot of words um, and I've seen a lot of other people use these. I think I would call this a, an all time classic, right? You can, I, I'm, I usually don't even buy these at art supply stores. I buy these at office supply stores. Um, it's not really, you know, branded or marketed as an art supply, but of course, we all know you can use whatever you want for art. That's the wonderful thing about it. They say the black and blue ink is archival, which means that it's acid free or non acidic or something. Oh, look, it drew right away. That's good. I don't know why I always draw on myself like that, but um, if you use your other colors to write on photos and stuff, it might ruin your photos over time. And of course, it is nice because it's easy to replace these ink cartridges uh, after you've written all 1,480.3 meters. Now, interestingly enough, I feel like this little non-ink part here at the end used to look a little bit more like caramel, and now it looks a little bit more coconut flavored. But well, we should probably find out what the true nature of it is. We can extract a small amount of it and see if it does indeed taste like the coconut that it looks like. Okay, now upon closer inspection, it looks like maybe some sort of... Uh, it looks like Vaseline, maybe. Almost odorless. I'm, I can smell the wood of the toothpick almost more. Maybe a whiff of petroleum jelly, though. On their uh, product sheet, on the website somewhere, I saw that it said it's non-toxic, so. Very oily. It's not worth going out of your way for. Let's stick with your normal lunch spot right now. Clean that toothpick off. We should also find out about the true nature of the ink inside. I'm just gonna skip right by. It's a tough cookie to crack, as the saying goes. All right, so this is gel ink. Doesn't really seem that gelatinous. Once you get rid of the petroleum belly, be, jelly base, um, 
as you can see, it doesn't, this still doesn't really come pouring out of there. All right, that seems a little bit more gelatinous. You see that globbing onto there? Pretty nice. So you could like paint with it a little bit if you wanted to. And um, hopefully this also is non-toxic. Tastes like Home Depot. Tastes like Home Depot smells. Um, better, it's somehow better than the jelly. I would recommend it over the, the caramelized stuff because the, the, the weird caramel looking stuff is just a little bit misleading. So um, I'd go for the ink over the caramel stuff, all right? Right, so uh, let's get out a drawing and I'll tell you a few more things about how I feel about these. A few more pertinent points, hopefully, than the flavors. I'm going to try to use all these sizes, okay? All four sizes represented here fairly. I'm going to start by putting one of these refills into one of these 0.1 pens. So I'm gonna put a 0.7 into a 0.1. Even though it hasn't run out yet, it's okay. Just gonna draw on a piece of printer paper. Like the good old days, let's go. So without Pilot providing copies of their proprietary testing to outside sources, I had to do a little testing of my own. And this little doodle, that's really all it is. I'm mixing little lines and shapes together in ways that entertain me. I I think I conclusively tested uh, all four sizes of the pens, 038, uh, point, I mean 0.38, 0.5, 0.7, and 1.0, and I conclusively concluded that uh, these things are smooth as butter. I really enjoy drawing with them. They do really lay down the ink very satisfyingly. That's probably not a word. It, it's probably better to say in a satisfying way. They, they lay down the ink well. I had, on regular s printer paper, I had no smudging problems at all, but I think I am pretty used to not smudging. Um, there are lots of great websites out there that show that um, smudging isn't a, gr there are lots of, the, uh, in my experience however, these pens do smudge some if you wipe your finger across the ink immediately after you draw the line. But if you give it just a few seconds to dry, I think you'll be okay. Then again, if you draw on some very slick paper, it always takes longer. All these pens were great for coloring in dark little sections of blackness, uh, especially with the .10, the fattest, thickest one. Uh, but all of them were pretty great at it. I did notice every now and then, though, it seemed like when I was drawing longer lines, every now and then it seemed like I would get one line that wasn't just quite as deep uh, and satisfying of a darkness and it was a little bit lighter gray. Maybe there was maybe some little feed problems Maybe just like 50% of the ink was going on to the little rolly ball. So these are ballpoint pens and I don't know if it's maybe Maybe it's just because it was near the beginning of the pen being used and it was just still getting warmed up or something I don't know, but most of the time they worked great um, you can use these either pointing straight up and down or a little bit to the side at an angle. Some of the other pens I use work better at, you know, up and down or at an angle. You know, like fountain pens work better at an angle. Rotring isographs work better up and down. These are a lot more flexible either way. So that's good to know. They have a comfortable grip. Some people in the past have noticed sometimes it's a little bit annoying when you press down. There's a little bit of give as the, the nib and the ink cartridge all inside of it moves a little bit, but I didn't notice that at all with these. Although I have noticed that with other pens in the past, mostly, you know, any pen that you have to click, it's got that whole moving mechanism on the inside. That can be a problem, but I didn't notice that with these. And I also noticed that for some reason, the 0.7 and the 1.0 have darker, a darker kind of smoky, smoky plastic instead of totally clear plastic. I'm not sure why, but they, they just do. And that totally doesn't really seem to affect anything either. You know, don't try this at home, etc. Just stick to the Twizzlers and you should live a long, productive uh, life. Let me know what other pens you want me to review and uh, we'll get to it. I'm thinking maybe, hmm, I also enjoyed these other pens called 
Uniball Vision pens. I used those a lot when I was uh, an up and comer. Look, you don't need fancy pens. You just need to enjoy drawing and then you'll do it a lot. The pen, a nice pen is just a plus. It's just like a little add on. All right. And this is a nice pen. I'd recommend it to anyone. It's good. Good for all sorts of pen related activities. All right. I'll see you all around. Goodbye.